so we see if you and i today can tell that we have a limitation in our life we have a lacking in our life i have a failure in my past you and i must know we are special to god we are chosen by jesus in fact jesus says he comes not for the righteous if you think you're righteous you don't have to sit over here if you think you're healthy you don't have to sit over here he says he comes not to condemn but he comes seeking to save the lost hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah and we see right through wherever jesus goes to whomever he goes whether it is to the sinful people whether it was to the godless people whether he went to the synagogue whether he went to the sea show wherever jesus went the first thing he would tell the people is the heart of god is open to you the heart of god is beating for you he tells wherever he went the kingdom of heaven is there at hand you know when i if i go back if i walk back to this place now i can tell you i can tell you here that my bible is at hand my bible is at hand i can open it i can read it i can close it i can give it away i can do what i i want because this is at hand and jesus went everywhere telling people the kingdom of heaven is at hand you know if you and i can we just stretch out our hand for a minute hmm? stretch out your hand you know the lord says so close is heaven so close is heaven thank you you know heaven is what we are longing for in our lives heaven is not something that that we're not talking about something that's going to happen after you die in fact the scripture says heaven is here and now if your life feels like heaven then you know where you're headed to if today life is hell we need to find our way back and the lord went to every person and this is the first message that jesus went everywhere speaking this is the message you and i need to know god wants to tell each one of us no matter what my family situation may be no matter what is the hell in my life what is the hell about my personality what is the negativity that's going on in my life what is the negativity in my relationships what is the negativity that's clouding my career my studies my future no matter what the lord says heaven is a possibility for you if you would reach out he says heaven is at hand hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. thank you jesus praise you jesus hallelujah when we praise god we should praise god why for whose sake for god's sake not because somebody is forcing you to praise god you know one day when i was going i heard the voice of father matthew you so we hardly see father matthew because he's all the time traveling he's traveling abroad and going to different parts of india and preaching the word of god so once uh, when i was passing by i heard his voice and uh, you know uh, if you heard him speak it's a very deep kind of voice and uh, i realized that oh father matthew is in down he the people now i am going to tell you a secret and i thought wow father matthew is so close to god and he travels so much around the world he should be knowing you know so much and if he has a secret which is going to tell all those people sitting in that hall i better not miss out so i waited outside that hall to hear that secret and then you know in his his usual way he said do you know that when you raise your hand and praise your god god is pouring out his blessings on you hallelujah shall we all raise our hands and praise god hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. praise the lord praise, praise the lord praise. Hallelujah. hallelujah now when i raise my hands and praise god you should know every time i do it i do it only for god i don't do it for the music i don't do it for the rhythm i don't do it for the person on stage you will see us this week and you'll never see us again you'll go back to your lives but i do it so that every praise every time i praise god i am making an investment i'm getting a blessing from god hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord 
Hallelujah. So we see Jesus going everywhere and the one message he wants every one of us to know is that God has a desire. A desire that your life and my life is transformed into a heavenly experience. That your life and my life can see the power of God, the power of goodness, the power of joy, the power of, of glory, the power of peace. And that is why we see in every page of the scriptures, God telling us he wants to bless us. When you hear the words of Jesus, Jesus never rations out his spirit. He never rations out his gifts. He never tells us, oh, you have been good for 20% of your life, so I will give you 20% of blessings. No. He tells us always 100%. John chapter 10 verse 10. He tells us, I come to your life for an agenda. And what is that agenda? Not to condemn us. Not to judge us. He says, I come that you may have life and have it in all its fullness. Not even 99%. Not even 95%. He says, you and I, we have a right to have life in all its fullness. I remember when I was... Uh, the city that I come from, when I used to go to school and college, there used to be a big board, a big board, and, and right on top in big bold red letters, it was written, live life king size. And when I saw it, I thought I really wanted to live life king size. And you know what that advertisement was for? Huh? I think they've changed the ads long ago. But anyway, below that you see this very smart cowboy with a cigarette in his lips. And it, and it was an ad for Will's Filter. And right below those big, big, bold red letters, you see live life king size. In small black letters, something else was written right below. Can you guess what it was? Smoking is injurious to health. The beauty of the word of God is there's no, there's no cautionary notes. When Jesus says, I come to give you life in all its fullness, he means this. If we open our life to God, he says, we have an option. If I can trust God, if I can tell God, God, you come into my life. You come into this relationship. You come into my way of talking. You come into the way I use my mind. The Lord assures us that we will live life in all its fullness. The same, the same Bible verse, John chapter 10 verse 10, tells us about the other option that I have. The other option. And Jesus says, we have one more option. The other option is, he says, he says, the enemy comes, the enemy of God, the absence of God, the enemy comes, he says, to plunder, destroy, and kill. So you and I must know, if I want my life to be filled with the goodness, to be filled with all that we want, to be filled with what is the fullness that I'm longing for, the one thing is to open that area of my life to God. If I want my relationships to last for eternity, I have to see that God is in my relationship. If God is not there in that relationship, you can be sure sin comes to destroy, plunder and kill. If I want God to, to come into my way of, of making money, my lifestyle, I must know when God comes in, I will enjoy what I do. If God does not come in, I'm going to be ever hungry, ever dissatisfied, ever disturbed, I will be a curse to all those around. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then you see Jesus saying, John chapter 14 verse 27, he says, I give you the fullness of peace. You know, it may be that in our families there is no peace. It may be that, that there is my personality is such that I've never known peace. Maybe I'm such an anxious person. Maybe I, I've messed up so many things. And the Lord says, no condition. He says, it does not depend on your circumstances. It does not depend on who you are. He says, when I come into your life, he says, I will give you a peace. And the word says that nothing in this world can disturb. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise. Shall we all raise our hands and praise God. Hallelujah. 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 John chapter 15 verse 11. He says, I give you the fullness of joy. I give you my word that your joy would be full. 
if i am suffering a depression if i am going through a brokenness what do we need to do the word of god says you open the bible you read the word of jesus and he assures us we will be filled with joy our sadness will be thrown out hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus praise you jesus hallelujah hallelujah so we see that our god is a god who is waiting to come into our lives our lives would be full of all that our hearts could ever desire our lives would be according to the plan of god jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 god says i know the plan i have for you we are busy working out plans but, but the lord is telling us that the god who created us he has a clear plan He says I have a plan for you a plan not to make you a boring person not to make you a depressed person but he says I have a plan to give you a future I have a plan for you a plan for your welfare not for war a plan to give you a future and a hope a plan he says that in which you will realize only when you come to him when you open your life to him when you seek him with all your heart you can never seek god with 30% of your heart if you seek god god is a god of heaven and earth a big god and for us to receive him we need to really open out our heart we need to clear the way and that is why jesus says the kingdom of heaven is at hand if you want heaven in your life nothing is an obstacle if we can turn to god God wants to bring heaven in our life and nothing can stand against the plan of God. Maybe we had worked out little plans in our life, plans for me to be successful, plans for me to be happy, plans for me to be popular. But the Lord God says, you know what he tells us? Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 and 9, it's there in the Old Testament. The Lord says, as high as the heavens are above the earth, as high as the heavens are above the earth we can never reach it we can never reach and touch the heavens as long as we walk the earth he says as high as the heavens are above the earth in fact if you go up even to the skies not even the heavens we will not be able to make out the human beings right everything is just like a speck of dust and he says so much higher are my plans for your happiness over the little plans you've made for yourself so much greater is god's plan for us to do well in life over the plans i have made for myself that is why there's a beautiful song that says the love i have for you o lord is only a shadow of your love for me the joy i have o god in my life is only a shadow of the joy that you want to pour into me you and i must know what is it that i want to settle for There is a God who is waiting to give us a higher life a life we can never work out but for that the lord says jesus says the kingdom of heaven is at hand but he says for that we have to repent matthew 4:17 he says repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand for me to experience heaven for me to be a blessing in my family for me to bring heaven into my family for me to bring heaven into my the circle of my friends for me to bring heaven into my lifestyle i need to repent now the word repent is not a very nice word it makes us feel very small sometimes we you know we, when you think the lord is telling you to repent you feel rebellious i'm not so bad I mean why does God want to make us look like small things that is a misinterpretation of the word repent you know um when i was studying in college i had a very good friend she was staying in a the same locality as mine it was a it's a big uh, residential area and uh, once in a month or so, once in two three weeks sometimes i would take i would take my bike and go to her place and uh, the vacations had come and uh, after a couple of months One day I went to a house and I knew the route it was a third turning or so after a certain junction but when I was turning it turning into that street I had a little doubt because the entire street looked bigger and uh, I was still wondering so I I called her and I asked her what's her address again and she told me yes it is the 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 fourth avenue whatever and then I saw the road mark so I went in and then I yes I saw the same apartments there 
and i told her this entire road looks different she said you know what about 3 weeks ago our chief minister the chief minister of us that particular state is a, a huge lady she said you know the chief minister was was coming by this road and so they had to clear up the whole road they removed everything they removed all the trees all the little road blocks they tarred the road they removed all the little dust bins all the vehicles were cleared so that because she was visiting some orphanage at the end of the road she said so the whole road was cleared so you know if you and i want this great big god to come into our life we need to clear the road clear the road that's what the first sermons in the good new testament is about clear the way for the lord prepare the way for the lord let god come into your life and for that certain things have to be removed suppose i i were to offer you a nice cool um icy sparkling glass of of coke would you be happy yes but suppose all i had in that glass was you know maybe yesterday somebody drank coffee in that glass a glass that is stained with yesterday's coffee would you like me to pour that icy nice coke into that glass no you say i'd rather buy something from the stall and the same thing is with us if god has to pour his graces into our life we need to remove the muck from our life we need to remove the dirt in our relationships we need to cleanse our mouth of all those foul language we speak we need to cleanse our mind of all those thoughts and how does it happen maybe in the past we have tried but you and i must know repentance repentance is not about me cleaning myself repentance is not about me brushing myself you know what we do i tell you what i i do that i used to do it all my life as as far as i can remember every lent the beginning of every lent before ash wednesday the night before or every advent or or on the 31st i will sit and make resolutions i will not watch tv i will not fight with my brothers i will not use these words i will not do this i will not do that you know we make a whole list of resolutions and then what happens 2 3 days later you will fall back into it and then you feel so miserable and then you say i cannot do it and that is a good realization we cannot clean ourselves we cannot clean ourselves jesus gives us his beautiful parable to explain to us what repentance is repentance is not about me a mucky thing you know going before god and saying i'm dirty so i'll clean myself i'm sorry sorry no it's not about that jesus gives us a, a beautiful idea of what repentance is not He tells us in the gospel of Luke chapter 11 verses 24 to 26 he gives us a very charming parable and uh, the parable is known as a parable of the unclean spirit now it goes like this hmm? for convenience sake i'm going to say it's the, it's about one of our brothers hmm? now um he's been listening to all the talks so he's been participating in the praise and worship and then he heard that talk on sin and he feels so convicted and he says yes god is going to bless me so i'm going to make all these decisions and he makes a list of all his resolutions i will not see this i will not speak this i will not hear this i will not do this you know the whole list of resolutions and my brother this little young brother of mine goes and to his good luck he finds an old priest whose hearing is like 80% off and he goes to this priest and happily deposits all his sins he goes and confesses all his sins and at the end of the confession the priest gives the absolution and with that one sign of the cross an unclean spirit goes out of this boy an unclean spirit you know that's the power of confession not only are your sins forgiven but the power of sin is taken out of you so the unclean spirit goes out of him and this unclean spirit starts wandering around now this is what jesus says huh? i'm not saying this the moment the unclean spirit went out of him now what is an unclean spirit is it black or white wow <laughs> okay is it liquid or gaseous wow you've been watching a lot of interesting movies i think i don't want to disappoint you but unclean spirit is neither black nor white 
nor is it liquid or gaseous <laughs> an unclean spirit is any power of uncleanness in me a power of uncleanness where i say i i i mean where i realize i do the very things i don't want to do i don't want to get angry but i i get angry i don't want to be be nasty but i i get nasty i don't want to say the words i say but i end up saying it i don't want to waste my time imagining all muck but i end up doing it it is an unclean spirit and not any of us can say i don't have an unclean spirit because you know what saint paul talks about him having that problem saint paul saint paul after his conversion romans chapter 7 verses 15 to 24 he says i do the very evil i hate myself for have you ever felt that way i do the very evil i hate myself for after doing it i i just despise myself and he says i am not able to do the good i want romans chapter 7 verses 15 to 24 i'm not able to do the good i want and he says this is because there is a law of evil in my members in my body there is a law of evil that controls me and jesus says this unclean spirit unclean spirit is any power of uncleanness a power of uncleanness that controls me this unclean spirit is taken out of this man out of this young man and then what happens he feels so free he feels good and he goes out and when he goes out do you know who's standing waiting over there in the stalls the old friend the unclean spirit that stall you know where you get a few cigarettes there and and you know whatever is interesting so and what would you do what does the unclean spirit do when he sees his old friend what would you do if you saw your old friend who studied with you at lkg what would you do you would run up to her and say my or him and say my goodness how much i missed you and that's what the unclean spirit is going to tell how much i missed you i have been only thinking of you and the good old days when you were with me and i was with you and then he would see this guy's heart all polished sparkling lot of lovely resolutions and this unclean spirit is very positive more positive than many of us he looks at his heart and he says wow now i'm in big time business so many more resolutions to break so much more muck to throw in and you know what he does corporate thinking in Jesus is parable he goes and forms a team because he remembers last time this fellow just goes for a confession just goes for a retreat and chucks him out like that so he forms a team of seven more spirits more unclean more wicked than himself and he comes to dwell in the house of our friend and what happens to him his last condition is better better was right now is this good news or bad news <laughs> you know what it is good news it is from the gospel and gospel means what what is the word gospel mean good news yeah gospel means good news it is good news for you and me because you and i must know the first thing the one thing we need to remember all through our life no matter where i end up no matter what pit i fall into you and i must know we have a god who understands us we have a god who is waiting to find us we have a god who is not a person who condemns we have a god who says if i am on your side who can be against you a god who says romans chapter 8 verse 31 onwards we see the word of god says if god is for us who can be against us if it is your god who justifies you who can condemn you if it is your god who acquits your case you know the judge passes the case dismisses the case he says if it is your god who acquits you who can bring a charge against you who can bring a charge against you it is this god who wants to tell you first and foremost at any moment of your life he wants to tell you that he is there for you he's a god who understands you you know quite probably i can make decisions i can make my own decisions 
I can, I can make a decision, I go back to the place I'm coming from, we're going back to the same irritating people, we're going back to the same company where there's a lot of temptations, I'm going back to the same workplace, and there in that workplace, maybe two weekends from now, they're going to have a party, maybe my whole team is together, and everyone is having a drink, or everyone is, is doing something that I, I decided I will not do, I'm going to look at my friends and I'm going to say, oh, these guys have been so cool. They've been so good to me. They've stood by me. How can I be impolite? If I don't drink, they're going to look at me and say, you know, I, I'm, going to be, I'm going to be looked at weirdly. I'm sure Jesus does not want me to look weird. What's the big deal in taking one drink? You know what? With that one fall, with that one drink, seven spirits come in. Then you will tell, look at that guy, he was traveling with me in the train, look what mess he is in now. We, we lose whatever little good we have, that is how evil operates. So you and I must know, repentance is not merely about me making decisions. Repentance is not about ourselves. Repentance, scripture reveals, is about building a bridge. It's about not decisions, it is about a relationship. Our faith, in fact, is about relationship. It's not about regulations. It is not merely commandment one, commandment two, commandment ten. No. The commandments, the obligations, the teachings of the church are precious because they are like a spiritual thermometer. They tell you where you stand. But repentance, our faith, is about relationship. Sin was about a loss of a relationship. In sin... We lost the relationship. I was afraid of God. I was not able to trust a friend. I was ashamed of myself. Today if I stand, and in some way today, you and I feel ashamed of ourselves. We feel we need to wear only a certain brand of clothes to be accepted. We feel we need to behave in a certain behavior, otherwise we won't be accepted. You always see, especially among the youth, sometimes we have such poor self-esteem. We're afraid to stand alone. We're afraid to stand for ourselves. We want to be accepted. And we're ready to do anything for that. If I have to straighten my hair, good, no harm. But we do it for the wrong reason so that others accept me. We are so ashamed of ourselves. If I am ashamed of myself, I must know, Adam and Eve was ashamed of themselves when they lost their relationship with God. Adam and Eve was, were such happy people. They had everything... According to the scriptures, they had everything. They were the richest people who ever lived. All the earth was under them. Hmm? They had a perfect relationship. They were born of each other's bone, flesh of each other's flesh, no family problems. Hmm? They had a beautiful communion with God. Every evening God would come down and they would take a walk. What do you think about prayer? You think it's going on your knees and, and, and looking pious all the time? Prayer can also be a walk. A beautiful walk with God. Hmm? And you see, the moment sin came was not the moment when, you know, Eve bit into that fruit, whatever. Sin came in the moment she doubted the love of God. The moment Satan showed her, you know, you don't have that one thing. You know what Satan does? He will not show us what we have. He will not tell us how good we are. Satan will show us the one thing I don't have so that I get a, a complex An inferiority complex. And he says, you know what? You don't have that one thing in your life. If you had that one thing, if you're, if you're dark, you'll think, oh, if I had a white complexion, if I had a, 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 a car of that type, oh, then I would be happy. Then life would be great. If I had lost another 20 kgs, oh, I would be very happy. We sometimes identify happiness and life with the one thing we don't have. That is a lie of Satan. And that is what Satan did to Eve. The moment she began to look at what was wrong with her all the time, that was when she began to doubt the love of God. Satan said, are you sure your God loves you? God is afraid that you should be good like him. She was already in his image and likeness. She was already like him. 
but we see it was when she started feeling that shame when she started blaming god when she lost that trust in god that she could not trust adam she could not trust herself all her relationships were cut sin is about broken relationships and today the lord is inviting us he's telling us heaven happens when our relationships are restored in the holy love of god heaven happens when i firstly come back to a god whose heart is open for me a god who says he will leave 99 sheep everything that he has and step out into the night to search until he finds the one useless lost sheep hallelujah 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 so you and i must know repentance and heaven is about coming back to a connection with god it's not merely about me making decisions but about turning and making a decision to look at god 2 corinthians 3:18 it says when you look at the face of god then your life will be transformed then your hearts will be filled then you will see your career your relationships prospering and this is the desire the one desire god has and that is why you see when jesus tells us this parable this parable of the 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 unclean spirit maybe it sounds like bad news but the beautiful thing is the greater good news about this parable is not just that god is come to be with us not just that god is coming into that pit to understand us but that god gives us a solution even before he speaks of the problem god gives us a solution even before he speaks of the problem and that is why in the same gospel gospel of luke chapter 11 verses 9 to 13 jesus tells us he says fill your heart with the holy spirit what is the holy spirit the connection with god the relationship with god god the holy spirit the third person of the trinity by which we are connected to god the love of god that flows between the father and son by which i feel god it is through the holy spirit that you and i can see god hear god feel god and know god in our hearts and in our minds hallelujah 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 so you and i must know it's our duty does not end with making a list of resolutions we need to make our decisions we need to remove the muck in our life we need to make a decision not to go back not to go back to that darkness not to go back to that company not to go back to that place where i know i might fall my decision will be completed when i know when i when i when i make a decision to be connected to god to be connected in a relationship with god we see this beautifully represented in the life of peter simon peter simon peter was like us you know a wonderful man he made a lot of beautiful decisions and you see in the in the uh, last supper the, la- the final moments of the that jesus spent with his disciples you know jesus tells all the disciples you know all of you will leave me and and one of you will betray me be jesus is very heartbroken he's sad he says my soul is sorrowful unto death not because of the de- the kind of death he is to face but he says because one of you abandons me betrays me all the rest of you will leave me and at that moment you know peter simon peter he wants to prove that he is different he tells jesus jesus you know what even if all the other guys leave you i'll stand by you matthew tax collector bad past he may leave you judas or simeon they're zealots they've got these weird ideas they're fanatics they may leave you and then peter says even if i must go to my death with you i will stand by you in fact it says jesus looked at peter he saw this man has a very good heart very good heart he wants to be holy he wants to be good like all of us he wants to be good and jesus tells him you know peter spirit is willing but Hmm? any idea the problem the flesh is weak the spirit is willing we all want to be good we all want to be a blessing but the flesh is weak and then jesus says peter wait and pray wait and pray because temptations will come just because you're born in a catholic family don't think temptations won't come guess you know it already just because of seven days of divine penance don't think that temptations will not come temptations will come 
trials will come sometimes storms should come but we see jesus says wait and pray so that the temptations may come but nothing will touch you wait and pray so that when temptations come you will not fall jesus says the one strength of our life will be that moment of prayer my connection with god if i have a connection with god storms can come temptations can come the worst situations can come but i will stand strong in that refuge of prayer hallelujah hallelujah does peter pray Matthew chapter 26 verse 41 onwards it says three times Jesus goes and wakes him up Jesus goes and makes up Peter and Peter goes back to sleep Peter could not hold on to prayer Peter could not hold on to that connection with God and therefore prayer could not hold him up and therefore we see few hours after making that big decision and telling Jesus I will stand by you what happens Peter denies Jesus how many times three times and to a to a servant maid to a person of not much influence peter denies jesus few hours after his decision and if peter who walked with jesus could do that how much more we and that is why we see the risen lord comes back to peter the first thing he does is come back to peter he doesn't let go of peter and god will not let go of any of us no matter where i am sitting no matter what i have decided for myself jesus will not let go he comes back to peter and says peter until you are filled with the holy spirit you will pray now this time jesus commands earlier jesus requested him will you not pray here jesus says wait and pray until you are clothed with the holy spirit until you are filled with the love of god the holy spirit the love of god Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know St Paul tells us he explains this clearly for us that repentance is about being connected to God. He tells us in 1 Corinthians 3:16 in the first letter to the Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 he says, "Don't you know what you are?" Don't you know who you are? He says, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. You know, when we pass through a church or a cathedral, when I pass by a church, what do I do? I bow down before that. It is so honorable. The presence of God is there. And, and here the word of God is saying, you and I, we are constructed for a purpose. You and I, maybe you think you're dumb. Maybe you think nobody's going to notice you. Maybe you think no one can respect you if they know what you really are. Maybe you think if your parents knew what was in your head and what was in your heart they would they would walk away from you, they would abandon you, they would chuck you out of the house. They won't finance your studies. But you know the word of God is telling you who you really are. It says you were made for a purpose. You were constructed to be a temple of the Holy Spirit, the highest purpose. An honorable being you were born to be a temple of the holy spirit you know i i i studied history for 5 years and in the 5 years that i studied history every year we had these tours you know trips we would go to different parts of india and uh, you know wherever you go you see one thing there's one trend you know when a when a when a king became victorious in war and he he won a piece of land he got a kingdom the first thing he would do is to to build a huge temple a glorious temple and in the temple was kept the wealth of the kingdom the king would keep all his wealth in that in that temple and after some years and decades the invading enemy would come and the first thing the enemy would do would be to destroy the temple to break up the the, the deity of the temple and today when we go there you know it may be a, a historical monument but today when you go there the deity is not there today that temple no matter how historic it is and no matter what the government has signed about it you will see that is a place where all the dark creatures are you will see bats monkeys graffiti you'll be so you'll see it's a place that is so dull and heavy if you and i were made to be temples of the holy spirit 
And if the Holy Spirit is not enshrined in this temple, that is when every dark power can take root in our life. If there is a negativity in my life, if there is a, a negative power that has taken hold of my life, you and I must know there's no use simply pushing out that power out of my life. If my heart is empty, again negativity will creep in. What I need to do is fulfill the purpose of my being and that is to fill my life with the Holy Spirit, to make the Lord, the God of my life, to make a relationship with God. Today, maybe we will make some decisions, the things we have to give up, that's important. But one thing you and I must know, the foundation of all the decisions we make should be a decision to live a life committed to God, to live a life connected with God, to live a life where I am in a relationship with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Repentance is about a relationship. You know, in today's context, we have forgotten the meaning of a relationship. We're all business people. I am friendly with you as long as you're friendly with me. I am nice to you as long as you meet my needs. I will smile at you when I know you will smile at me. I will give you a gift for your birthday worth uh, 500 rupees. If for my, my birthday you give me a gift worth 500 rupees. We are doing business in all our relationships. In all our relationships, I remember a very close friend, friend of mine, she got married. And I said, why did you marry him? She said, because I think he loves me. A few months later, she separated. And I said, why did you separate from him? Because he does not love me. Everything is a business. Like how you go to that shop, you pay five rupees and you get a cup of coffee worth five rupees. You're doing business in relationships and that's not relationship. But a close friend of mine... She taught me what is the meaning of a relationship. She was trying to encourage me to, to, to fall in love, to get married. But I realized that the, the, the lesson she gave me was one of the best lessons in spirituality that I got. This friend of mine, she fell sick. So she went to the hospital and it so happened that the doctor she was assigned to was very young and handsome. And when she saw it, she said, my heart began to beat so fast and I knew this is the man I must build a relationship with. She said, this is the man I knew I had to live the rest of my life with. She said, I knew it. At the end of the treatment, this innocent young doctor gave her a visiting card. And he told her, you know, if you get the symptoms again, you can give me a call. You know what, after that she had the symptoms all the time. So she said, when you want to build a relationship, you know what the first thing you should do? She said, get a good cell phone. I wonder how they had relationships in the old times. Anyway, she said, you get a good cell phone. And then she said, right through the day, she was sharing with me what she, how she built the relationship. She would get up in the morning and send an SMS. Hi, are you awake? What's your POA for the day? Will you give me a call when you wake up? And right through the day, something happens, an SMS. Do you know what she said? You know what he did? Nothing happens. Another SMS. Oh, life is so boring. How long am I to live like this without you? Every reason, every occasion, every non-occasion became an occasion for an SMS. And then she says at the end of the day, she would tell her parents, I had a horrible day. Please let me go. I don't want dinner. That's how these people who fall in love lose weight, you know, so quickly. And she would go into her room and she says, I latch my room. And she said, I go into my bathroom and latch the door because double security is always better. And then she says, no matter how tired she was, she would, when she dials, when she, you know, dials that number and she speaks to him, all the tiredness goes away. For hours, they would be talking about this thing and that thing. And finally, as they say in the old days, sweet nothings. You and I must know, our God is the source and the fullness of love. A love that no one else can give. The sweet, sweet love. Hmm? And for us to build a relationship with God, we need to key in our life. Every aspect, everything that I do, you and I must know, our God is interested. And if God comes into our life, blessings come. I just, you know, right through the day, I send an SMS to God, free. Oh God, I'm going to meet this person. 
you bless him you bless oh god i don't want to meet this person please give me the courage oh god i have to do this you be there for me i praise you jesus thank you jesus oh lord i don't even know whether i love you but i want to love you oh lord i don't even know whether i want to love you but i want to say i love you i think i must say i love you you must know love is not about the feelings feelings are up and down it's about decision right through the day making a connection with god and everything we do and at every day this may sound crazy but every day making time to be with god if you don't make you know this is so important i know it's not popular i know you're going to think perhaps it's not practical but if you cannot make time for god you're wasting your time you and i must know we have to make daily time for god one hour is what jesus says can you not wait one hour with me and in that one hour is when we are allowing god to work in our life 23 hours i am working out my happiness i am working out my studies i am working out my success i am working out my rest but in that one hour is when i am allowing god to work and the psalmist says psalm 127 the word of god says unless the lord builds the house the laborers toil in vain unless the lord builds the house of my future i am wasting my time unless the lord builds the house of my relationships the house of my family the house of my peace the house of my love the house of my life i am toiling in vain so you and i must know the best investment we can make is when we connect our life to god because our god is a god who is waiting Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 the word of god says god is waiting god is able and he is waiting to do for you what is beyond your asking and your imagination hallelujah hallelujah praise you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah